Hello, I'm Robert, fact checker and science blogger, a vol voluntary. I don't get paid anything for this. And I do this for the Doomsday Debunk group, where we have some other fact checkers as well to help scared people. And this time, it's people who are scared that Trump might start a nuclear war or do something uh, very dangerous militarily in the last few days of his presidency. I don't think there's any likelihood of that. He's just very preoccupied with his whole the election thing. But uh, this is to, and in any case, he's never been, a, a, uh, he's been a president to threaten more in failed threats. So I can understand why people think like this because of the things that he said to Kim Jong-un, for instance. But there was never any possibility of him actually doing the things he threatened to do back then. And whether or whatever you might think about his own military, uh, how good he is at military thinking himself, it's very important to understand that a president is not a general. And the president does not run an army campaign. You won't get Trump on the phone telling the uh, fighter pilots where to go, you know, telling, t uh, telling the uh, uh, aircraft carriers that they have to go to such and such a place and you're know, working out the amount of munitions they have to have on board and all the sorts of things, whatever it is that a general does. Uh, no, uh, Trump doesn't do any of that. And nor would any other president. Even the president who have been generals in the past, but even the president who is a general, at least today, would not directly command the army. What a president does is order a general to act. And then it's the other very important thing to know is that it, it was clarified in the last century. I wasn't so clear before then, but it's absolutely clear now and every officer and even every soldier knows that they are totally responsible for their own actions. So if an officer uh, and you uh, you uh, uh, drive into a village and lots of unarmed villagers there, the officer, the officer says, shoot those people. And if the soldiers do what he said, then they've committed a war crime. Not just the officer, the soldiers have too. Because they can't devolve responsibility for doing something criminal according to the four principles of armed law warfare just because someone told them. And that works all the way up, but all the way up to a five-star general. If he is told something, Trump, if Trump tells him to do something, and, and in his case, he won't be talking about something like that. It'd be something like, you know, are you going to do such and such a campaign? And the in that situation, the exact same situation applies. He is, the general is 100% responsible for everything he does. And it's no excuse that the president told him to do it. And so, the, and he, the, although presidents, as politicians, they are not educated in the law of armed conduct. But a general, you can't get to be a general without being thoroughly imbued in your entire uh, being, or your entire pres uh, professional life, what you can and can't do as a, as a general. And so, these four things that every general, we just know, and he bought, these are just a summary of the law, he'll know much more than this. That, uh, so uh, let's bring up these, these four things that any general would know. So first of all, there's, if you're in any military campaign, there has to be a military objective. You can't just fire away at people without an objective. You can't drop a bomb with no military objective. And then you, uh, you've got your military objective, you've got military uh, targets, then you've got civilian objects. And you all, you'll always have civilian objects near to your military target. You have to have distinction. You have to uh, conduct your campaign in such a way that the civilian objects are not in any way harmed by whatever you do. And if you can't do that, you the uh, loss of life and damaged property incidental to the attack must not be excessive. So if you're in all out war with someone, then you can sometimes, you can't avoid ha having some damage to civilians and, and the risk of loss of life and damage to property. You 
pure general who's, uh, who's commanding a war. But this has to be uh, not be excessive in, in relation to concrete and direct military advantage that's expected to be gained. And then there has to be a military necessity even for the attacks of the enemy themselves. You can't just shoot soldiers for no reason on the, on the other person's side. Everything beyond that is criminal. For instance, if there's a, a parachutist um, a parachutes down and they parachute out because you shot down their jet, then it is absolutely criminal to shoot this fighter who's, who's fallen down and, and who's, who's and descended from their, their fight their jet that you shot and they were ejected from it and then descending to the ground. There's no way that you're going to capture them. There's no way that they're hazard to you anymore because they're no longer in their jet. And it's absolutely criminal to shoot someone who is just who is in that situation or someone's wounded and various other things like that. So, and then finally, on, it's prohibited to um, use any of these things in such a way as to cause superfluous injury or unnecessary suffering. And, and certain weapons are just completely outlawed now. No, you, you, you can't, uh, like the uh, chemical weapons, biological weapons, and that's the reason, because they're, they're totally prohibited, the entire class of weapons, because of the unnecessary, superfluous injury and unnecessary suffering. And then, if you did anything that would cause that. And in peacetime, or indeed, it's very hard to think of any situation where you could use a nuclear weapon that doesn't go against all of those. It's very very few situations in which we would use a nuclear weapon. Hiroshima would just not, not would be not. These these things have been clarified since then. And uh, and since the Vietnam War as well, things that happened during the Vietnam War, Korean War, these just would not be done today. And uh, you, you have these rare exceptions where everyone says it's, you know, it was a war crime. So, so you've got to bear that in mind and then it's not just looking at the cons at the at what you're doing, but it's what you expect the the reactions to be as well. So a general would have to look at all that. So the very things that you don't want the general to do, then the general himself doesn't want to do. You know, things that worry you, where you worried about the impact on civilians, then the general absolutely has that totally through his being. He is there to protect the Americans, but also he's there not to cause unnecessary suffering to anyone else in any other country either, especially civilians. But even for the soldiers he's fighting, then it's criminal to cause unnecessary suffering to them too, where there's not a military necessity for it. And that's a war crime. So any general will know this. It's all, He's been trained for years, decades probably. It's all, it's all through all his thinking. And then if Trump was in the middle, and if, if Trump, say, said to John, go and drop a nuclear weapon, and he says, what's the military objective? How is this legal? Uh, how is it proportional? Uh, how, have, how am I going to be able to distinguish between military and civilian targets? Uh, why is this military, why is this uh, dropping this nuclear bomb a military necessity? How is any loss of life proportional to your aims? And how are we going to avoid unnecessary suffering? And Trumps would have to answer all that. And then if Trump doesn't have an answer to all that, then the general would say, well, I can't do it. It's a war crime that you ask me to do. It's, and then and then he'll say, there are these things that are legal. So he, he would, might bring up some alternative plans if there's some real military objective. If there's no military objective, then he won't bring up any other plans. He'll just say, You've got no military objective. I, I don't belong here. You know, this is not my job. You don't ask a general to do something that has no military objective. He, he just wouldn't do that at all. So then, if it got any further, and the uh, and Trump just persisted, then during any such very important conversation, like for instance, if Trump uses the nuclear codes, and to talk directly to a general, the general will have a team of lawyers listening to, the, listening to the entire conversation. And Trump will too, just automatic. And 
then if, if it comes to any problem, then he'll say, the general will, will call in his, his lawyers and say, you know what, uh, can you talk to Trump's lawyers? We need to sort this out legally. The only situation in which that wouldn't happen is if it's imminent necessity that the general, generally, generally it's if the general rings up Trump and says, hi president, we've just had notification the nuclear bombs just about to fall on the United, on the United States. Uh, which of our four worked out responses should we do? Something like that. That's the only situation in which would, and then they'd have previously planned out responses that have already been worked out for the legality. And it would be a very fast response and Trump has to answer and then they've only got minutes to act. That's the only situation in which you wouldn't have this long lengthy process. But if there's no timeline, there's no end date, there's nothing imminently happening, they can take as long as they like. And he'll say, well, you, 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 haven't, you haven't come up. And even if Trump's lawyers think that Trump is right, but the general's lawyers say no, then eventually it gets kicked down to Congress. And uh, uh, the, the president can't order a general to do something that, that, that goes beyond these, these things. And it'll be debated extensively in Congress. So there's just no way. So, so people have got worried because Nancy Pelosi, it's clear Nancy Pelosi can't, uh, she's a politician. And they, they may have told her this before, but you know, it's, it's just a different way of thinking. And uh, in fact, surely must have told her this before. But they, they all may have been just you know, making a political point by ringing them up. And, and maybe she knew what they were going to say. It's even hard to say. But for whatever reason, uh, the, they just gave her back this standard thing, saying, no, Trump can't do that. And that, that's what they told her. So, um, and, and basically, I mean, in the next 12 days, there's no way that the general is going to, if Trump says, well, I, I want to start a military campaign against Iran or something, there's no way a general's going to, going to go along with that. He'll say, well, look, uh, you know, Biden's coming in in a few days. This doesn't make sense. How you, how, what's the point of starting a, a campaign against Iran? What, what's the military objective and why does it have to be done now rather than after Biden comes into power? So um, as it becomes president. So I, 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 there's no way that Trump's going to be starting some, some crazy crackpot military campaign in the next 12 days. So, uh, or 11 days, whatever it is now. So anyway, so that's it. And just, uh, that's basically what I'm saying here. And so there isn't any real, real concern of this sort. And um, there, there are the details. And then if you click through, I've got a thing here. Uh, this was an, an earlier one. This part when I was uh, helping scared people before, uh, when Trump was threatening North Korea. I told them over and over again that Trump can't. Uh, could, there's no way that Trump could have attacked North Korea at that point because of the risks to Seoul. And actually, during the, um, his second, uh, one of his summits with Kim Jong-un, he actually had a long press conference afterwards. I think it was the first summit, the big one. And when they got that peace agreement thing, and after it was all over, Trump had a long press conference with the, with the journalists, which I listened to. Uh, it was quite long an hour or something. And during that, he actually said that there's no way we could attack North Korea because of the extensive risk to Seoul. So he actually said it at that point, but he never said it before. But after they, they actually signed that agreement thing, then he said it, which I'd been saying for months before, based on reading the military experts and what they said. There, there was no way that he was ever going to attack North Korea, but he'd put a lot of bluster into it. And so he's, my button is bigger than yours or whatever. It was, uh, anybody who had a real clear understanding of the military situation knew there was no way he could actually do that. So, um, and, and he has, in fact, has never started any major war during his term as a president. Anyway, anyway, so that's all I want to say. I want to keep this video short. And uh, yes, sh shout out for Doomsday Film Group if you, if you are, um, especially if you're good at fact checking or if you're scared and you need help. I just remind you that you, you need, you need the, we have these rules, uh, especially since we have many autistic members. And it, so 
the very clear rules that uh, if you're going to post to it, uh, autistic members need uh, very clear guidelines so we can understand how the conversations and what isn't isn't permitted. And I suggest you before you post, just have it, they're very obvious things, most of them, just have a link down. Some of them you might not, might be a little bit surprised. It's for because of particular things that scare people in the group that you have to watch out for. So if you're joining the group too, so you're very, very welcome to come and help if you're, especially if you're an expert or any of this, or you're a fact checker, and just, a, just a heads up to, to have a look at the, at the rules before you, before you post. Uh, thanks for listening, hope this helped.